Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, inna khalaqnakum, indeed we have created you, min dhakarin wa unsa, from a male and a female, meaning from Adam and Hawa. With respect to lineage, all of you are equal, because all of you eventually trace your lineage back to who? Adam and Hawa. You're all related to each other somehow. So don't think that you are superior to somebody else because of your race or because of your skin color, because of your family background. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ And we have made you شُعُوبًا Into peoples, into nations وَقَبَائِلْ And tribes. Why? لِتَعَارَفُوا In order that you recognize each other. Not that you think of yourself as superior and you boast and you show off and you look down on others. No, this is for the purpose of identification. شُعُوبًا is a plural of the word شَعْب شِينْ عَيْنْبًا And شَعْب can be understood in many ways but to make it simple can be understood as a race, right, as a race. Basically, the word sharp gives the meaning of jam with the freak, things coming together and then separating also, going apart also. So if you think about it, like Lego pieces, right? Lego pieces, you build something with it. When you build something with it, it's a whole structure. But then each one of them is a separate object also, separate entity also, right? So sharp is basically that large group of people that people identify themselves with. So for example, Arabs. This is what? A sharp. Right? Middle Eastern. This is what? A sharp. Okay? So we have made you into shu'ub wa qaba'il. Qaba'il, plural of qabila. A tribe is basically that which is a part of sharp. So for example, within Arabs, there was the qabila of Quraysh. There was a qabila of Mudad. There was a qabila of Ghifar. Right? So for example, Within the, you know, South Asians, for example, or people from Indo-Pak region, you will have people who are Punjabis, or you will have people who are Urdu-speaking. You know, depending on the tribe, right? Or, you know, a smaller categorization. And Qabila is from the word Qabil. Qabil is what? Before. So you look at who came before you. Who are your ancestors? Who came before you? So, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلُ Allah has made you into peoples, into nations, and then tribes, further division. Why? Because one tribe is better than the other? لِتَعَرَفُوا For the purpose of recognition. Because otherwise, how would you tell people apart if everybody was the same? How would you tell people apart? Can you imagine how boring life would be if everybody ate the same kind of food? If cuisine was the same no matter where in the world you went? It would be so boring. Isn't it? I mean, different cultures, different ways of dressing up in different foods and different languages, this is what makes life enjoyable. لِتَعَرَفُوا Then what is it that makes a person truly better? What is the measure of superiority? Allah says, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنَّ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Indeed, the most honorable of you near Allah is the one who is who is most righteous. Meaning the more taqwa a person has, the more honorable he is. And who is the person who has more taqwa, most taqwa? The one who develops the qualities that are mentioned in these verses and refrains from those actions which Allah has forbidden. Inna akramakum atqakum. And if you think about it, a person with good character, isn't he more honorable than people? The more beautiful character a person has, the more he is appreciated by people. And the more rude and harsh a person is, the more he is disliked by people. Inna akramakum inna Allahi atqakum inna Allah alimun khabir. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. He knows you. He is aware of you. You see, ilm is general, and khabr is, you could say, more specific. Being aware of the realities. So he knows you. He knows what you do, and he is fully aware of your reality. You can say all you want that I am very polite and I am very kind-hearted and I am very sensitive. We can say that all we want. But Allah knows our true reality. So what's the lesson in this ayah? What this ayah is teaching us is basically racial equality. That people are all equal when it comes to their race. You see, the Arabs were very racist. They were very, very racist. So racist that if a person was from a different tribe, you would treat them differently. Their life had basically no respect near you, just because they belong to a different tribe. And we see numerous examples of this in the seerah, and how the Prophet ﷺ emphasized 
racial equality over and over again. If you look at all the major khutbah that the Prophet ﷺ gave, think about the khutbah that he gave at the conquest of Makkah hmm? and at Hajjat al Buda, the farewell pilgrimage. What was emphasized? Racial equality, right? That no Arab is superior to a non-Arab and no non-Arab is superior to an Arab. Likewise, in the khutbah, the Prophet ﷺ also said that no white person is superior to a red person or a black person. Different colors were mentioned. Emphasizing what? Racial equality. So, don't worry about the qualities or the characteristics within you which are ascribed, which are God-given. Worry about what you can acquire. The taqwa, the character, the way in which you deal with other people. Because that is what matters. In the following verse, again, we are made to feel humble that we should not feel proud of our iman and we should not brag our faith either. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَتِ الْأَعْرَابُ The Bedouins say, Amanna, we have believed. A'rab is the plural of the word A'rabi. They say that we have believed. Meaning, they said this out of weak faith. Or they said this with nifaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you tell them that لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا You have not believed. Meaning you say you have believed as if you have reached the perfection of iman. No, you have not believed, meaning you're nowhere near the perfection of iman. Or you have not believed, meaning you are not truthful in your claim. Because you say this with your mouth that you have believed, whereas in reality in your hearts you have not believed. So what should you say? وَلَكِنْ بَعْتْ قُولُوا You say, أَسْلَمْنَا We have submitted. Meaning, you have just outwardly submitted. There isn't actually iman in your hearts. وَلَمَّا And not yet. يَدْخُلْ It has entered الْإِيمَانُ with The faith فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ In your hearts. Meaning, faith has not yet entered your hearts. It has not yet settled deep in your hearts. You have not yet attained its reality. وَإِن تُطِيعُ اللَّهَ And if you obey Allah وَرَسُولَهُ And His Messenger If you obey Allah and His Messenger meaning you repent and obey with sincerity then لا يَلِدْكُمْ He will not reduce you مِنْ أَعْمَالِكُمْ Of your deeds شَيْئًا anything لا يَلِدْكُمْ He will not deprive you meaning of your reward The word يَلِدْكُمْ is from the root letters Hamza لَمْ تَعْ and alt is basically naqs, to reduce, to give less. It is basically when a person is deserving of some wage or some reward for some work that they have done, then that wage is not given to them. Or it is reduced. This is alt. So, لا يلدكم من أعمالكم شيئا Allah will not reduce you for your deeds at all, meaning He will reward you accordingly. For He is fair. إن الله غفور رحيم Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. To who? To those who repent to him. So what do we see in this ayah? There's a particular background to this ayah, which is we learn that some men from the Banu Asad ibn Khuzayma, they came to Medina, this particular tribe. And when they came to Medina, they entered the masjid. And as soon as they entered, they began bragging about their Islam to the Prophet ﷺ. They kept saying, Amanna, Amanna, that O Messenger of Allah, we testify that we are Muslim. And we would like you to know that we have come to you without you sending us anyone, meaning you didn't really have to fight us. We came to you willingly. And we have traveled in the darkness and in the cold. And we have come all this way to you. We believe. Basically, they were saying this in order to make the Prophet ﷺ feel obliged to give them some reward. So they kept on saying, Amanna, Amanna. So here, they were disciplined. That you are claiming that you have iman as if you have mastered Iman, as if you have reached the perfection of Iman. No, you have not yet reached the perfection of Iman. So they said, Amanna, Allah says, no, you should say, Aslamna. And this means that there is some difference between Iman and Islam. What is that difference? Islam is external. It is outward compliance. It is outward obedience. And Iman is internal. When these people, they claimed that they had iman, they had perfection of faith in their hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, you have outwardly obeyed, you have outwardly been compliant, but these actions, these outward actions are not actually from your heart. 
because if they were from the heart, then you would not be showing off, you would not be bragging. You would observe proper etiquette with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in this ayah, what lesson is being taught? That it is quite possible that an opinion we hold of ourselves is not necessarily true or correct. The reality may be quite the opposite. These people claimed, Amanna, we have believed. And Allah says, no, you have not reached the perfection of faith. Rather, you have just submitted outwardly. So let us never be fooled by what we think of ourselves. Secondly, what we learn from this ayah is that Allah knows what is really in our hearts, who we really are, what we really are. Do we really have iman? Are we really sincere in our faith? Outward actions, yes, they are important, but remember they are never sufficient. So let us never be satisfied by what we do outwardly. Let us never be deceived by the apparent good deeds that we perform. We see that the Prophet ﷺ, he described the khawarij, a particular group of people who claimed to be from Islam, but they were not actually Muslim. And they left Islam very quickly. The Prophet ﷺ described them as people who recite the Qur'an and as people who perform salah. In fact, these people, they would belittle the salah of the Sahaba. And their recitation, the Prophet ﷺ said that their recitation of the Qur'an did not go past their throats, meaning it was just outward. And he also said that these people would leave Islam as an arrow leaves a bow. Very quickly they would leave Islam. So we see that these people who came into Medina and they claimed to be perfect in their faith, they're being disciplined. That do not be deceived by your outward actions. Do not claim perfection of faith for yourselves. Rather, be humble. And then we see over here that at the end of the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you obey Allah and His Messenger, then لا يلدكم من أعمالكم شيئا إن الله غفور الرحيم that it's never too late to correct the state of one's heart and one's intention. Then, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, the believers, meaning who are really believers. Allah says, إِنَّمَا Indeed only, المؤمنون, the believers, the real believers are who? الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Those who believe in Allah and His Messenger. People who truly have faith in their hearts are those who believe in Allah and His Messenger then, after that, they do not even entertain any doubt. Summa, the word summa, what does that indicate? It indicates the sequence of events. And it also shows that with passage of time, that despite the passage of time, lam yartabu, they do not have any doubt. Meaning they remain firm upon their faith despite the passage of time. وَجَاهَدُوا And then they strive بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ With their properties وَأَنفُسِهِمْ And their lives فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ In the way of Allah. Because it is the striving that proves sincerity. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ It is those who are the truthful, meaning who are truthful in their claim of iman. This is different from the people who are described in the previous ayah. Different from those who believe only outwardly. Who are the صَادِقُونَ Who are the truthful? Those with unwavering faith. Those who are determined and committed to the end. They don't doubt. Not even a little bit. Even if someone tries to embarrass them about their faith, they don't entertain any doubts. Rather, they're confident. We see, for example, Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu anhu, that once a non-Muslim person, he mocked at him. And this hadith is mentioned in Abu Dawood and also in At-Tirmidhi. That once... A Jewish man asked Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu that does your messenger also teach you how to defecate? Meaning, he also teaches you, instructs you as to how you should use the bathroom? So in other words, he was saying, what kind of a religion is this? And Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu said, yes, of course he does. And then he went on and on that yes, he has given us this instruction and that instruction and he has forbidden us about this and he has permitted us to do this. He went on. Meaning, he wasn't embarrassed by the question that this Jewish man asked him. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the true believers are those who don't doubt. They don't waver. And what this means is that they are stable, they are firm upon their faith. 
And this is something that should really make us worry. That just because I am doing something good right now, it doesn't mean that I will always remain like this. I can only continue in doing good if Allah gives me the ability. So let us always ask Allah for stability and firmness and faith. The Prophet ﷺ taught us this dua. That Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hawri ba'd al-kawri. That oh Allah I seek your protection against al-hawr ba'd al-kawr. It's a very deep meaning. But basically al-kawr is the wrapping of the turban. When something is fixed, established. And al-hawr is the opposite of that. So that oh Allah protect me from losing my faith. And Allahumma hdini wa saddidni. Another dua that oh Allah guide me and keep me guided. The Prophet ﷺ would make dua, Ya wali al-Islami wa ahlihi, masik me islam hatta al-qaqa alayhi. That, O oh Allah, keep me firm upon Islam until I meet you. Qulat say, atu'allimuna Allah, do you acquaint Allah? Tu'allimuna, allama yu'allimu is basically to teach. Are you teaching Allah? Are you trying to tell Allah, bidinikum about your deen? By your claiming, amanna, amanna, are you trying to tell Allah that you have iman? وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ While Allah knows مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Whatever that is in the heavens and whatever that is in the earth. Meaning if you have iman, then you don't need to brag about it because Allah knows. وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ And Allah is knowing of all things. Nothing is hidden upon Allah. So don't try to convince Allah with your words. يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ يَمُنُّونَ They consider it as a favor. Meaning they were bragging before the Prophet ﷺ about their iman. Why? Allah says, يَمُنُّونَ They consider it as a favor from the word man. And man, remember, is a huge favor that is done to someone. So, يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا That they have accepted Islam. Meaning, the fact that they have accepted Islam, they think that they have done you, O Prophet ﷺ, a huge favor. This is why they keep telling you, that they have accepted Islam. Allah says, قُلْ Tell them, لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيَّ إِسْلَامَكُمْ لَا do not تَمُنُّوا You consider a favor, عَلَيَّ to me إِسْلَامَكُمْ of your Islam. That your accepting Islam is not a favor to me. بَلِ اللَّهُ Rather it is Allah يَمُنُّوا عَلَيْكُمْ Who has done a favor to you and هَدَاكُمْ That He has guided you لِلْإِيمَانِ to Iman. إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you should be truthful. Meaning, stop bragging about your faith to people as if you have done them a favor by accepting Islam. This is not a favor to anybody. In fact, when you have accepted Islam, then Allah has done a favor to you. And really, it is Allah's favor upon a servant that he is guided to Islam and then to some righteous deeds. So when we do anything good, we are being benefited. It is not a favor to anybody else. It is in reality Allah's favor on us that He gave us the strength and the ability to do it. So when we do anything good, remember we are not doing others a favor. Allah is doing us a favor. So for instance, when we wear hijab, it's not a favor to our parents or the men that we cover in fana. When we pray salah, we're not doing a favor to our parents. When we learn Quran, we're not doing a favor to our parents or our teachers. Our volunteer work or any kind of service is not a favor to anyone. Rather, it is Allah's favor upon us that He gave us the ability, the opportunity, the strength to do it. So, بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And we see that the people of Jannah will say upon entering Jannah that Alhamdulillah الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا All praise to Allah who guided us to this. We could never have done this ourselves. We see that the Prophet ﷺ, he said to the Ansar on the day of the Battle of Hunayn, that, O people of Ansar, أَلَمْ أَجِدْكُمْ دُلَّالًا فَهَدَاكُمُ اللَّهُ بِي That isn't it that I found you lost and Allah guided you through me? وَكُنْتُمْ مُتَفَرِّقِينَ You were divided and Allah united you through me. You were poor and Allah gave you riches through me. So really, Allah favored you so much by giving you Islam. So never think that your accepting Islam or your doing anything good was a favor to someone. Rather, it was Allah's favor on you. Inna Allah, indeed Allah, ya'lamu, He knows, ghayb as-samawati wal-ardi, 
the unseen, the hidden aspects of the heavens and the earth. Wallahu basirun bima ta'malun and Allah is seeing of whatever that you do. All hidden matters are known to Him. Our intentions, our speech, our dealings with others, nothing of this is hidden from Allah. So always remain humble that Allah is watching. In Surah Al-Najm, Ayah 32, Allah says, "Who are أَعْلَمُ بِكُمْ إِذْ أَنْشَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ وَإِذْ أَنْتُمْ أَجِنَّةٌ فِي بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ Allah knew you very well when He produced you from the earth, when you were hidden in the wounds of your mothers. So, فَلَا تُزَكُوا أَنْفُسَكُمْ What's the lesson? That do not claim purity for yourselves. In Surah Hud, Ayah 5, Allah says, يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ Allah knows what they conceal and what they reveal. So fear Him, be mindful of Him, and guard your private and public, your internal and your external affairs. And this is the message of the surah. Because perfection of akhlaq, which is the theme of the surah, surah al-akhlaq, the perfection of one's manners, remember it is linked with one's iman, it is linked with one's taqwa, it is linked with the fear of Allah. It is impossible to improve one's akhlaq without improving the level of taqwa. And taqwa, how is that developed? By knowing that Allah knows me. He knows my reality. He knows the state of my heart and what I display, how I deal with others. He knows my intentions and He knows my secret and He knows my private and my public. So when a person develops this kind of fear of Allah at all times in dealing with all people, then it is that he can improve his akhlaq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all beautiful akhlaq, real taqwa. Wallahu basirun bima ta'amaloon. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.